good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today, we're going to be looking at a new Azure Maru card. Unfortunately, he got pushed a little bit down the peck in order, because there was a new Don fan, and then there was a new Incineroar GX, which I'm still bowled over how good that card is. I am delighted. But actually, this as a Meryl does not deserve to be ignored. It's a pretty good card with a fair amount of potential, and certainly one that deserves a quick look at. Now, the translation here comes from the lovely Osietra25, or I'm sure that's probably not how it's supposed to be said, over on Twitter, who did respond to multiple tweets of mine yesterday when I was asking for information about these cards. So big up to that lovely person. They are a lovely person, and I am a very grateful wussy. So as a Meryl... What does it actually do? Well, if we look at the basics here, 100 HP for a stage one, gonna be honest with you, a little bit low. We looked at the aforementioned Don Fan yesterday. Don Fan had 130. We see a whole bunch of basic Pokemon like Tapu Koko sitting out there with 110. 100 on a stage one, not great. Weakness to Metal is a little bit annoying, because Duskmane Necrozma's first attack for free energy will get a one-hit KO. And as a person who's played that deck a lot, I can tell you, getting a KO with a first attack is great. Suppose it'll take a hit from Registeel, but it's still not particularly impressive. The Retreat cost of two, not particularly good. And the Resistance to Darkness, in theory, is good. But Zoroark's gonna do 120. Which with resistance will come down to 100, which will KO you. I suppose it means if you got a Sudo Wudu on your bench, you won't be one hit KO'd by a Zoroark, but we're starting to get into fairly awkward territory. Now, the first attack is the one with which we are most concerned, the one about which we are most excited, and apparently, it allows you, for one fairy energy, to look at the top eight cards of your deck. Choose any number of energy cards you find there, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. And it says energy cards. It does not say basic energy cards, according to the translation that we have. This, this is awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Because, well, I mean, imagine like an energy lotto. But instead of looking at seven cards, you're looking at eight. And instead of getting one energy... You're getting as many as you like. And imagine instead of putting it in your hand, you're attaching them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. That's what we're talking about here. Now, inevitably, there is going to be an element of uncertainty with this particular attack. Because you could hit no energy. Or you could hit all of your energy. This is a huge risk-reward attack. But there's certainly ways you can put it in your favor. So... Maybe you use something like a Mallow, for instance. You can then make sure you put two energy on top of your deck so that you can guarantee you're going to hit two energy. As a side note, it wouldn't work to say use a Macargo and then use a Mallow because you use Macargo, then you use Mallow and shuffle all but the top two cards, including the one you put there from Macargo. But you can certainly use a Mallow here to make sure that you're going to at least hit two energy. And it's any energy. So you can get double colorless energy here quite nicely. You could get something like, I mean, beast energy or super boost energy. Your prism star energies could be attached with this. Although... As a quick side note here, Enhanced Hammer will still discard your special energy. One thing you need to remember when you use this attack, you're attaching it and then passing to your opponent, and then when it gets back to your turn, you'll be able to use this energy. So there is absolutely a possibility that if you use this attack to accelerate some special energy, your opponent will then use an Enhanced Hammer to get rid of that special energy before you've ever had a chance to use it. So just a quick heads up there that it is slightly risky in that respect. But if you're playing a deck that plays a lot of energy, this could be great. I mean, imagine playing a Ho-Oh deck. You need four energy per Ho-Oh to smash. Well, here, you could potentially hit eight energy and really clean up with your Ho-Ohs. Although with situations like this, and I kind of talked about this in my Typhlosion video yesterday, my recommendation would be to only put free energy per Ho-Oh. You can always attach a fourth using your energy attachment for the turn, but that way, 
you've essentially got more ho -Oh ready to go. Last thing you want to do is put four energy on a ho -Oh, only for it to be Guzmud and KO'd. So, as long as you hit a bunch of energy here, and Mallow really will help, this is great energy acceleration. Yesterday we looked at Typhlosion. Typhlosion is a stage two. For one energy, search your deck for free energy and attach them. Okay, that guaranteed free energy, whereas this is a little bit of a risky play. But you could potentially get more, and you can get special energy. So I do think this is a better attack. Problem is, it's for a fairy energy. If this was for a colourless energy, I would be loving Azamaril, and I would be saying how amazing it is, and what a great tech it's going to be for any deck that plays a decent amount of energy. If it was for a colourless energy and Wally hadn't been rotating slash banned, I would think this is a genuine turn one tech that could be used to go nuts in a bunch of decks. But it is for a fairy energy. And Wally is rotating out of standard and being banned in the expanded format. And now we're just in a situation where you've got to, on turn two, use a fairy energy. Now, let's say you're in something like a Gardevoir deck. This can get you a bunch of energy. Gardevoir decks are likely to be playing a bunch of energy. This can get you both your basic fairy or your double colorless energy or your super boost energy. And I still think Gardevoir decks should be playing that. And then we're actually in kind of... Ah, kind of territory. But... The problem is, we looked at these Fairy Rise cards the other day, and I said that Xerneas Prism Star should probably be a one-of in all of these decks. And I said that Rabombi is a great tech. And I said that the new non gx Guard of War is really good. And I did say, got to admit to this, got to say it out loud, that the new Mimikyu GX is looking pretty good. Yeah. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Even in God of War decks, we've got other cards we might want to play. Love it for energy acceleration, but unless you're playing Rainbow Energy or playing a Fairy deck, it's not really going to work. And even in Fairy decks, the best one is God of War. And we've got so many other options. The other fairy deck that's seeing a lot of play at the moment is Sylveon GX. But Sylveon GX wants one energy in the act of using Magical Ribbon. It does not want Azamaril. I know that's sad, and I'm sorry. As for the attack here, one fairy energy, two colorless energy, 60 damage, flip a coin. If heads, it does 30 more damage. I mean, look, it KOs Rayquaza if you flip a heads. That's quite nice. And if you don't want to take the chance, if you're worried you might not flip ahead, Choice Band will do the same thing. Either you flip ahead or you get a Choice Band, you get a one-hit KO on a Rayquaza. Annoyingly, Ultra Necrozma will not go down under such circumstances. You will need either both of those or one of those plus a Shrine of Punishments in order to actually get a one-hit KO on an Ultra Necrozma. It's fine as an attack, but the Dene can get a KO on a Rayquaza with a double colorless energy. You don't need the third energy. Sylveon GX can get a KO, EX I should say, with a double colorless energy without needing the third energy. Now both of those do need a choice band, but it's with a choice band it's guaranteed rather than with a choice band it's guaranteed without you need a coin flip and you need that third energy. So I'm not loving it as an attacker. I'm not buying the attack. But I like the first attack. It's good for accelerating energy. I just don't know which deck it fits into. If it was colorless energy, I could name you a few. But it's not. It's fairy energy. And the only two fairy decks we've got, I just don't think, are actually going to use it. And that's my problem here. So I'm going to be giving it between two and three Wossies. I like the first attack. But I just think the requirement for fairy energy and it being a stage one just means it's not going to see any play. It makes me sad, ladies and gentlemen, but that's the way I honestly see it. If, however, you disagree with me, well, that's all right, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the comment section is there for. Go nuts, but do remember the rule. 
be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.